In this video, we're going to use this icon button and create a search input from that. Okay, so here we are with our app. I'll quickly just navigate to our header. And this is the main part where we're going to work today. So first of all, when we click this button, something should happen. So let's define a property for that. I'm going to call this property search toggled. And by default, it's going to be false. Now, when we click this, search toggle should be changed. So here, as you know, icon button has the signal clicked. So on clicked, search toggle needs to change. False, search toggled. But just in case, instead of just search toggled, we're going to define the parent's ID. So here, I'm going to define header root. So we're going to say header root search toggled. So let's check if this works. On search toggle changed. On search log search toggle state. And yeah, it works. So based on that information, we're going to change the preferred width of our icon button. Let me give an ID to this icon button also. I'm going to call it search button. Based on our search toggled, we need to fill as much width as we can. So in order to do that, I need to define some more IDs. This button I'm going to call options button. And that's all we need for now. So the preferred width, if search is toggled, it should be the parent's width minus the options button width minus the spacing between buttons or in general elements. Since we have two elements besides our main element that we're currently using, we're going to set parent spacing times two. But if the search isn't toggled, then it should be the same as the height. So I'm going to create two more properties. They're going to be read only because I don't want anyone to change them. The first one is is maximized. Let's set it to false for now. And the second one is minimum. So for is minimized, it's going to be simple. If the search button width is the same as the search button height, we know that it's minimized. Let's animate it. And it's pretty simple. We're going to use behaviors. And then we're choosing which property it should be applied to. In our case, it's going to be layout preferred width. Okay, here we're going to use the smooth animation. And I played around a little bit with the values. The duration should be 1000 milliseconds. And the easing type should be easing out expo. Let's try it out. Okay, now it's animated. But as you can see, the icon is still in the middle. I would like to put it on the left. Luckily, our icon button has its icon as an alias. So what I'm going to do is use anchors on the icon. So icon anchors left should be icons parent left. Now, if I click, it still doesn't work because in our icon button, we use already anchor center in, and that is overriding our anchors dot left. So what we need to do in this icon button, we need to override the icon center in, and we're going to center it based on the is minimized property. If it's minimized, we're going to center it in the parent. If it's not, we're going to set it to undefined. And now our icon is to the left. Now it's a little bit too much to the left. So I'm going to set some margins. And now it looks okay. The next step would be to get rid of this title when the search bar has been toggled. And for that, we're going to use states. First of all, and the most simple part is to change the opacity based on the toggle state. So if the header root search toggled is true, then it's zero. If it's not, then it's one. And now it's getting rid of it, but I want to animate this too. So we're going to use states and I'm going to create two states. First state will be invisible. And that is going to be when the header root search is toggled. And here on the property changes, the target will be the column layout. But in order to target it, I need an ID. So we're going to call it welcoming layout. And we're going to set the opacity to zero. We're going to create another state. We're going to call it visible. And this is going to happen in every other case. So I can set it to true. I could have also set this, but this is better because if we add some more states, this will be the default state. And here, of course, the opacity is one. So now that we are using state for this and we're changing the opacity of the welcoming layout, this is not any more necessary. And now it works pretty much the same. This is the part where we're going to introduce transitions. I'm going to use probably the transitions and I'm going to find just one transition and it's going to use a number animation. So 
you could use property or properties if you need one property you could use this if you want multiple you can use this but of course if i use this one i can also define just one so it's basically the same thing and i'm gonna change the opacity of course and the duration will be 1300 milliseconds easing type will be based on our state so if the welcoming layout state is visible we are going to use easing in expo if it's not we're going to use easing out expo okay now it animates properly and now just one more step left is to add the ability to enter text here so we have already our icon button inside of it i'm going to add a text area but in order to use a text area you need cute quick controls i'm going to give it an id height same height as the parent now the anchors are important so anchors left should be on the right side of the icon search button icon right and the anchor is right should be to the right and i'm going to give it a little bit margins and some other properties so it functions normally so color vertical alignment select by mouse is an interesting one by default it's false but if you set it to true basically what you could do is this if it's set to false by default you can do it and it's pretty annoying in my opinion the default should be true but whatever and we're going to add a placeholder I'm going to say search in order for our text not to overlap we're going to use clip true and the wrap mode would be text wrap now we have our input and our placeholder and we can type in whatever we want we go out of bounds and do not enter a space this happens so what we're going to use is not word wrap but wrap anywhere and now this can be avoided you could play around a little bit you could change for example this color but i'm going to leave up this to you i have only one more change that is kind of annoying if you look very closely when this expands to the maximum this button moves a little bit that is because in our layout the width of our button is a little bit bigger than it should have been and that is because i didn't calculate the spacing properly if we change this to three that shouldn't happen anymore so it's a little bit smaller but we avoid this issue now let's not ignore our is maximized property because we're going to use it for one very specific reason and that is when our search input opens i want it to focus automatically here so first of all let's set is maximized and it's going to be pretty similar to this so if the search button's width is the same as the width that we defined here then it means that it's fully maximized and on is maximized changed if it's true of course we are going to take the search area and just force active focus now when it opens it focuses and just as a nice addition if you want to use your keyboard you could add this shortcut in order to have shortcuts you need to quick 15 if it's maximized the shortcut works and when you press the shortcut you're taking the search toggle setting it to false so if i save this and press escape it closes and that's it in the next video we'll use this in order to filter our contacts see you in the next one